whether an outgoing governor, a former governor, an outgoing president, a former president, people in America, you are what you call super delegates. They will endorse someone, and in, in that endorsement, they will explain why they believe the person they are endorsing will be better than the opponent. And so, because it is uh, it's public secret that I did endorse the current governor, um, and I did campaign vigorously for him, um, many people warned me that uh, he is not the kind of person I think he is. And now, what were the issues that we, I thought that when you you have someone who has worked with you, you discuss a number of projects together, you understand what to form policy choices and you contribute or contribute to all those processes. Now, the challenge of continuity is easier. When I say continuity, that does not mean everything will be done the same. Because there are a couple of things, if I were to do them again, give you current reality, I may have put them different. But, for example, I give specific examples. I expect that everybody who gets a job, whether it's political office, business, corporation, etc., you look at it and say, how do you run it more efficiently? That is to be expected. Uh, however, like I gave you a specific example, I said the problem of Nigeria is that we, we have these abandoned projects scattered all over the country. And I said, for example, it's not rocket science. If this building, the total cost is 200 million, and I have spent 180 million. And put the structure in place. Now I need 20 million to paint it. If I don't spend that 20 million to paint it, the 180 million is wasted because nobody is going to move into a house and I'm going to paint it. But with 20 million, there is a new house that has been uh, constructed and it will be available. So there is no Many are completed. For example, we had a policy of uh, building more schools. Because public schools have collapsed in the country. And the idea was, I built the number of schools in every ward I told the one of the people. The uh, people now uh, we name uh, the Red Roof Revolution. And we ensure that we have uh, ceramic tiles, we introduce standard desks two people for one desk and then one people one desk in secondary school. This is to ensure that our children are taught in an environment that is clean and that compares to private com uh, 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 schools by teachers that are well paid and well trained. And we did that everywhere across the net and breadth of the district. There is no local government, there is no work where you will find those where it's uh, But there were many more schools that needed to be refused. Even in the heart of Benin here, where the roof is out, like we used to joke, when the plane is landing, children in classroom can see the aircraft. And I did recently, somebody posted a photograph this year of a school where the children are running from one corner the other, you see flood covering their feet and all that. Now, for me, we said no one government will finish all the schools. But if we sustain the idea, every year we build more schools and abolish the use of zinc uh, and use long span aluminium, uh, they last longer. And then we decided to, we're going to introduce casement windows. So that when you pass in the classroom, the children can, you can see the children, the teacher is passing, you can see whether they are learning or not. And the Benin City Water Storm in particular, I wanted the best road for the city and for everywhere in the do that will be the road 
I didn't believe in the idea of doing substandard work that will not survive the season because then you are wasting money. Now, um, Julius Benja told us, I invited them, that year should be kind of quality of job I wanted to do. And Julius Benja said, we can't work here, you need to drain the city. There are so many basins, stagnant water, and any road you do without standard uh, drainage on both sides. And the size of the drainage will be determined by the volume of water, which can be calculated by experts. That's how we brought Oricon that carry out a comprehensive study, on the basis of which we started the first phase. In that first phase, it includes drainage, roads, etc. This airport road you see in this lane, to have a huge underground drainage, you can walk, tall as you are, you can walk under inside that tunnel. That evacuates all the water to the Atik or Bariba. And other side the uh, streets that we constructed, like the tomato market, the one to Chinkade Bini's uh, residence, the one to Charlie Temple residence, all those, the old market on uh, after. Um, the zoo, the water that comes from those adjoining streets flow into the primary drain and it takes to the, to the river. So you can never see the airport road flooded. The same thing, uh, the teachers have told you. You will see that we created a 14 kilometer drainage and you can drive under it. In some places it was open, in some other places it was closed, depending on the nature of the area. And those primary drains are equivalent to the moat which our great grandfathers constructed in, in, in Benin. And having created that, we're now able to transform that area called Teachers House, Upper Silopo, all the way to an area properly called Channel 55. You see the two drainage on the two sides of the road. You see the size of the drainage. That size is determined by calculations of the volume of water so that we were now able to create six lanes in an area that was not possible, complete with street lights and sidewalks. You go to Upper Lawani, we deceited the place, brought out a building, reclaimed the moat that was already compromised. But let me just write up by saying that we agree, as government came, and I still do believe so now, that we must waste money by constructing any road without drainage. And the drainage must flow to a particular destination, either the moat or any of the two uh, rivers and some other areas in Benin. If it doesn't flow to a destination, we're going to have stagnant water. I'm shocked that as I left, this project was abandoned. And I'm sure you all live in Benin when it rains these days. There are areas you can't, you can't go to. If that project had continued, one day the entire city would be completely flooded. There are a couple of things like that, I mean, of the Mutia College, formerly known as New Era. I can't believe that we complete this school, the children ask me that, why should they, their school be different from the red room, the watered red room? And I promise I will make it in one of the modern schools. And if you go to this place, the buildings are there. But even the to face around it, but that was not done before the end of my tenure. These are that are bad. And even painful to me is that those children who move to the classroom with uh, modern furniture in the, in the classrooms. I remember they gave me a painting that day. They gave President Bowari uh, a gift. Secondary school, they were so happy. As we speak, they are not allowed to occupy the school. And they only use the hall for so called uh, consultancy services. And the children are seeing the old school. Now, these are policy issues. As a party, governments are supposed to execute projects based on the party manifesto. So when people say, why are you interfering? It's not interference. Those elected on the platform of a political party must be seen to execute the manifesto of the party. 
and I can go on and on and on and on. Uh, the last road I did, I remember, is the second circular. Second circular. Second circular. Those who live there and those who live so far, they know that that was an abandoned area. I remember bringing the minister of health. He could not recognize his father's house because they have been sinking because of flooding and all that. We transformed it to Dwar Karibu. But I could do is the street lights before I left. Because the standard policy was road, sidewalk, street lights. And all those are abandoned. But even the street lights that have been restored, because we carry out some studies and we find that there are businesses that thrive at night. Now, we have coronavirus now, so there is a new normal, as they say. Otherwise, in the normal day, a city that even the colonial masters considered was well planned, we agreed that we have to return nightlife. So every road that we constructed must have street lights. And I was happy sometimes when I walk out in the night, I see their palos, I see e trees. People who close away from work, some shops will open because it is well lit. It deals with security questions, etc. Et and of course, beautification. A lot of the really people go to Dubai sometimes, they see a water fountain picture, they want to see it. We constructed a caustic water fountain, which people were coming to emit it across the, uh, across the world. And those people who are in diaspora, America, Britain, and so on. They were like, no, this cannot be beneath. This is uh, this must be. We take a picture in Dubai. I do remember it was front page in Guardian newspaper. What Saturday? I just bought the paper and I saw, and everybody was like, is this beneath it? That, that is how we talk about urban renewal. And I have, I have always made this point. Right? We need to have in a family house, most visitors come only to the city room. Now, if the city room is well ordered, they go away with a good impression. This family is very well organized. Look at the city room, everything, furniture, uh, decors, everything is in place. They will think that even if the bedroom should do not have a bed, the guests will not know that. But that does not mean that eventually you will not furnish all the room. But because you may not have all the revenue and resources you need, you start from somewhere. So it was a common and we gave Benicity, you know, we had to do what we had to do to restore the, what you might call, the lost glory of the city. And I'm happy that by the time I left, everybody, I use the word everybody, minus those who are political who don't give credit for political reasons, agree that this will change it. Now, if these standard roads, drainage, the Benicity Water Storm Master Plan was sustained, the flooding we are experiencing in some places would be less. We also realized from studies that it's not good enough to just create drainage. As the water flow every year, before the rainy season starts, you always get a warning from the meteorological survey. But there will be rains, there will be of this volume and that volume. So you deceit the drainages across the city. That is what we did in the city of Portum Line. In addition to rebuilding and expanding the drainage, we five junctions. In addition to redesigning the underground water, uh, uh, storm water system to defraud in five junctions, we also brought a, a swamp boogie to reclaim the, the, uh, the moat so that the water that flows gets to that moat and takes away. Now, when you abandon all of that, now, where is the benefit of continuity? When we say continuity, it is not that you continue with my style, no. But this house was 90% completed, fully 10%. The hospital, and this is the last part I will make. I said, uh, people deserve, after the death of my wife, the first thing I did after morning was to commission to lay foundation. And nobody sees that building. The day the president saw it when he came to commission, he said, this is the most beautiful edifice he has seen anywhere in Nigeria. And we ordered state-of-the-art equipment 
from Vermet Nigeria Limited. You Google Vermet, V E R M E D, and if you tell the story, who they are. And we, I paid 75%. The council approved that we should pay 75%. The whole idea is a lot of these things, they are not like microphone that you buy off the shelf. You have to order to specification and they produce it for you, and it takes time. Nobody is going to assemble an equipment overseas if he's not sure of his payment. So we have to make those payments. But the remaining 25%, my successor will not pay it. Till today, he has not paid it. Number two, the hospital was closed for over two and a half years. Or they had to do a documentary. After mutual friends have talked to him, why are you not opening the hospital? And the man said, no, I want a consultant. I want to use consultants. So that is your decision. Go make and decide whether you want to use consultants or what you want to do. But bottom line, open the facility to the public. They set up a house of assembly inquiry to investigate the hospital. The, their idea was to, to, to find fault. But by the time they saw what was on ground and all the documentary and so on, the house of assembly in their report, which you can ask for, and I insist you ask for it. They said, the hospital has been built to specification. The mission of the hospital has been well accomplished. But the government, the government should open it for public use. And they said, if the governor wants to use consultants to run the place, then he must be ready to pay subsidy so that it doesn't become an elite facility. Because poor people cannot afford a consultant that will charge you uh, commercial value when you go when you fought here. It wasn't meant for elite, it was meant for Edo people. And to today, the hospital is not working for you. Now, I expect you, for example, as members of the media, you have the right to say, Who put this place? It's a public facility. And the one complaint that people have always made, and I discussed this with you, is that you do not bring people who are outside to do jobs that people inside can do. Like I mentioned there, even the preaching of lunch, the menu card that people know whether it's rice and goosey, whatever, whatever, is not preached in a good state. Preached in Port Haikon. And people complain to me, eh, comrade, we told you this, we told you look at it now. So I couldn't abandon the people. And I have to try to engage them. So for me, the issue in this campaign is not about me at all. I'm never going to be governor again. And it is for anybody who has been in government, nobody who knows what governance is about that we think you want to control a government. But what you can't do is to advise. And also to make peace between the rank and file between leaders and leaders because it's bound to be quarrel. But if you say you are going to crush this, crush this, crush this, I mean you are here. If you play back your your campaign materials in 2016, you will see the governor in the hotel of Tony Kabaka, dining and whining there, and then addressing the youth over 3,000 that he mobilized for his support. And he came there to address them. Whatever is the issue, you threaten to demolish the place. The man goes to court. We are not in the jungle, we are in the banana republic. We have separation of powers. The judiciary has the power to adjudicate. The man takes the lawful part, he went to court. The judgment is reserved for a Friday. By Wednesday, you send bulldozers and you demolish the place. I mean, what can go on and on? So, the just point I want to make is that I'm not going to, my view is, this is not about any individual. It's not going to be about me calling. We are just going to ensure that this election focuses on issues, issues of sustainable development. Edo was already taking second and third position in Waek and Neko. What position have we been taking? Right? How many new schools have we been? The one that, you know, are still flooded. What are we doing about them? I, I watched uh, some of the social media stories about when it rained for 10 minutes, what happens in the minute. So nothing personal at all, but I had the body. As the national chairman of the party,
But even if I was the national chairman, as a lawyer member of the party, I cannot take a microphone or address a press conference to denounce uh, a governor, not only the one that I, I, I supported, but also to begin to point out what is not doing right. It will that amount to campaigning against yourself. What I thought was reasonable to do is what we did. Have a meeting of more number himself, his deputy secretary of government, about seven of us. We say, look, hard fact. This, 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 this is not the place. These are the complaints, members of the public. People say, forget about those who hire, right? There are critical segments of society. They don't do press conferences, but they can see. Because I told him, and I told uh, all those working with him, I said, we told the new people, don't believe anybody unless you see it. I mark. Now this is your MOUs, MOU, they are fine to give the people hope. But be ready, be certain that you do not tell them you are going to do X, Y, Z, and I did this, not done. You tell them yeah, there's going to be modular refinery. But people are excited. Oh, it is good to have a modular refinery. So the era of uh, fuel shortages or high price of oil, and you see it's big coupled already. By November 2018, the refinery will be ready. We are now in 2020. You are going to do industrial park. You bring the vice president. The vice president comes, make live speeches, how many jobs will be created, and so on and so forth. The companies that have already applied for space in the industrial park, the power supply will be 24 hours uninterrupted. Now it's 2020. You go to that place, and I challenge you to go there, you find nothing. So for me, as a party member, not just as a party leader, these are legitimate issues that we discuss with those elected on our platform. Even the president of Nigeria, President Muhammad Buhari, as a party, we against them. These are the promises. How far have we gone? The National Assembly elected on our platform, if they pursue policies that we think are injurious to the manifesto of the party, it is the duty of the party to ask questions. But more importantly, to insist that we reconcile policies with the manifesto, with the promises made. Now, anybody who now choose to mischievously try to make it personal and say, oh, it's God for that reason, it is burden. Because the Nigeria constitution does not allow for independent candidate. So if you are elected on the party platform, you must submit to the dictate of the party policy. That is not interference. And it's about issues. And then you now malign people by saying they want money, you have no money to share, and so on. Meanwhile, check the records. The money for security. Check what the average was when I was in office and what it is now. So we can go on and on and on. For, for me, I just want to do people to know that I do not have any personal best interest other than the common good for Edo people. And happy to be so privileged and I enjoy the support across the three senatorial district. Whatever anybody say, I am on record as the only person who had won the election in all the 18 local government areas. I won all the 77 wars in uh, Edo South, even against the Bini general who was contesting. That was the level of my acceptability. So I owe Edo people a debt of gratitude. And so if I contributed and I and I do someone who has turned out to be different and who has abandoned the vision, a shared vision, not vision that was decreed from Africa, that was decreed from above, something that was discussed, and you abandon all of those projects, I think I have a duty to to let the people know, okay, if I made a mistake, humble enough to own up, but be manly enough to take steps to correct it. All right, so he, um, the governor of the new state, or the government of the new state, um, Put in the newspapers that you and Kapinosa were bringing in from I mean, you to win uh, the election. Because the media newspapers everywhere. Uh, what would be your reaction to that? I think you must have read the Kapinosa's reaction. Yes. And that is the problem with uh, the government. You know Kapinosa. As he be associated with violence. Because what I want the media to do is not just to pitch statements. The Kapiosa you know, has he been involved in two fighting? Have you seen him on television abusing anybody? How could you say that he's bringing thoughts? But you know, 
my problem sometimes with the media reporting is that you know the dubious scheme he created. I don't know the word for it now. Go by this one. You have uh, two policemen in the car. You have three talks in the same car, and the right police. The police give cover to those talks, and those are the people who goes to detonate uh, explosive in the secretary of the party's house, the former the general's uh, place. You guys know who are between those things, who are being the victim of this violence. There are people who the governor perceived were not supporting him. So I am not going to add or surprise. Kapteosa, the gentleman that he is, has replied him. And I can only say I dug into to everything he said. And that tells you the kind of man all I was advising you is not everybody you fight. This man is a businessman. He's not a politician. Most people who know Kapitosa know that he has a generous spirit. He doesn't need to know you. People queue there. I always ask him, I say, Kapitosa, you are running a one-man social security. Everybody who has problems, once they hear his guitar, he comes around and he gives. He says, but I cannot abandon my people. He is not seeking votes. It's on record he has never contested the election. So why will you, because of that, try to undermine him as well? But as I said, Kapiosa has spoken for himself and I have adopted his position. He's going to make wide allegations. You know my problem with the media, as I said. Who carry a do state waste management board trucks to block the road to my house? Who did? Who organized uh, uh, talks? to do bonfire on the airport road, to prevent me from coming to a new state. Who is the governor who said, I have won Oshomoli, if he come here without my permission, I can no longer come to my state without permission. When PDP stopped me from flying to, to Ekiti, during the fire means election, you know, it was a huge embarrassment that I couldn't fly as a governor. Now in my own state, my own governor is saying, I can't even come to a and you had a, a CPU say, well, to avoid trouble, I should go back. I said, I have to come to a do. And you saw what happened. It took me one hour for police, Air Force personnel to escort me up to this place. And then they carry a truck to block the road. A man who has that history. I reported when they sent dogs to throw stone into this compound. You saw the visuals. When the two Kukada, about two, three hundred Okada, led by the deputy governor, to come and harass me in my own village, in my community. So my problem is, when I watch uh, television, cable news like CNN, BBC, etc., you will see them say, this is what President X has said. However, last time, this is what the Democrats complain of, and these are the visuals. You play by those Okada, I mean, uh, those uh, dogs that went to my village, and see who was leading them. You have those visuals. You have them in Channel. You have them in AIT. You have them in NTA. So who has had a history of violence? In my election, it's on public record. Was any one person shot yeah. in 2012? So when have I become i uh, I'm not the candidate. I'm not a candidate, but I'm a two citizen. And they say to whom much is given, much is expected. A do has given me so much from zero. They made me governor. Without money, we overthrow PDP, which people thought was impossible. If they don't that for me, for life, I am committed to the Edo project. That's all. But I, can, I will do so peacefully and transparently. I don't need to rig elections. When I have IMA, why do I need to rig elections? Those who want to vote, the issue in this election, it's just causing distraction. The issue is, your Excellency, Mr. Governor, you recall that I will challenge you, the media, to bring the visuals. The speech you made the day the Vice President, you invited him to come and do groundbreaking of uh, of uh, industrial park. Your Excellency, you say, how many years now? We haven't seen anything there. Oh. More snakes, more kidnappers have adopted the place. It's not a kidnappers park. What about Gelegele Port? We're supposed to be receiving ship or see major construction work going on. We are not seeing your excellency. When will they start? Because you told us by now, by your first term, people will be seeing this. 
What about the more talk about housing estate for all the homeless people in the state? I mean, <laughs> you can go on and on. Where's the modular refinery? All these have MOU elaborately celebrated and so on. So, my brother, when is Tamara cannot flow or win an argument, he resort to punch it. That is what the government is doing. Because he has no answer to this question, but he must answer the question. We will compel him to answer the questions. Because the last meeting we had, seven of us, the governor, the deputy governor, secretary to government, the advisor, political advisor to the governor, and the chairman of the party, and myself, I asked him, God knows, I asked him, before 2019 election, I said, Mr. Governor, the way things are, in Edosa, we are going to do this. He said, what? I said, what are we going to campaign with? The whole of Obia, Northeast, local government. What project will you say when you go to each ward? You say, in this ward, this is what I've done. Because you said to government, you deputy government, he may not know, he never follow us to do politics. When we go to a, a rally in a place, we make sure it takes place in a school we are built. I will leave one old building. Now, which school have you built in Obia? No new school. Which one have you done in uh, Obia Southwest? None. Which one have you done in uh, Orion? None. Now, you people have the visuals. When the governor said he has adopted Oredo as his a major development area, and said Charlie Tepo and Co., they have been using the local government to milk and help themselves and leave the people poorer. He is from Oredo, I mean, uh, 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 Ode. Ode. He is going to now set up community development associations. Uh, no, 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 no. Uh, he's going to set up development committees that are not made up of politicians. Because according to him, politicians are about that develop already. It's now going to be four years, unless something happens and uh, Christmas is postponed. He will be four years in, uh, he's already more than uh, three years and nine months. Have you had anything going on in the in, uh, in new model? But I can tell you, I constructed all the new model. We make a little model to Ishan. We did a major job in Abudu. All the roads in Abudu, we did them. Uh, in Banker, we tied all the roads in the bank, the remaining two. Oh, Those two remaining, asked if he had done anything about them. So there is no part of a deal that I'm a stranger. And I will put to what I've done. My, my pain is people expected that if I came to learn and I got as far as I did, my successor who was part of the process doesn't need to go through the learning curve. He will build on that and by now a deal will be higher. Look at the level of crime. Look at the house breakage. And I was telling him, you have to manage the youths. There are trade-offs. If you disempower them in the daytime, they will have to engage themselves at night. So the responsibility of government is to transform everyone. You don't describe your people as street urchins. Were they born as street urchins, in society that turned them to whatever they are. And we don't need to go outside the country to get the model. Between uh, Bola Metinubu and uh, Fashola. Those area boys you used to find in uh, Lagos. Remember area boys? Oshodi. Oshodi, Oshodi is one. I used to do strikes in Lagos. My source of recruitment was Oju uh, Elegba and all those other police. Once we go there, we we'll park them, so okay, don't block the road. Our track is successful. They transformed them to area, from area boys to gardeners. All those places they were sleeping, they now plant fly. So, from area boys to area workers. You don't sit down and say they are street urchins. Who was born in government? It's the environment, it's history, our socioeconomic history that has enabled some people to climb the ladder and detain people under the grass. A government challenge is to transform. And you must use the instrument of governance to do the greatest good to the greatest number. And that was why. I am proud to say that when I was governor here, I worked in areas that were abandoned. I still remember Constance uh, Inoro area that was a, a dump site. I transformed it, we built it, put street light, put drainage, and we named it Ganifa Emilia. And then we moved to Ilea area where Ogomudia was living. We transformed all the streets there. All the roads we built were high density areas so that the greatest good 
to the greatest number can be realized. So nothing personal, but if we try to make everything personal, tomorrow is going to accuse you that you came to my house to hold meeting on how to destabilize this government. You will say so. Because if you can choose Capriosa, then who are you? Thank you. Thank you, Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Well, if you just watch, just watch the vocals. Kindly, kindly share the vocals. Kindly share, share so so right. Okay. Share these vocals. Just watch and just watch them. Kindly invite your friends, follow the page and share these vocals. Okay. And that's a shumole. Granting the press interview. Kindly share and uh, God bless you. Thank you very much. God bless.